one of the breakthrough talents on the UK comedy scene. I also add as well that he's not overly impressed with that photograph. Omar <laughs> Hamdi <laughs> has Egyptian parents, but he grew up in Wales. Fertile ground for what he's best known for, his shrewd and funny observations about the confusions of British multiculturalism. Now based in London, he's just been performing a solo show at the Brighton Festival Fringe, and he's also got another solo show at the world's largest <coughs> arts gathering, that is the Edinburgh Festival in August. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Jochen Vahr. Um, well, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I've, just, I've just been rumbled on live telly for you, not you speaking speak Welsh. Welsh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. Sorry, Plaid Cymru, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> Thanks ever so much for coming in. I mean, Welsh and Egyptian, I mean, great, great ground there just for, for humour. It's yeah, a, it's a I wonderful think so. combination. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it helps with comedy because I think the the one thing that all comics have in common is all comedians have that sort of outsider status. Whatever you're talking about, you don't have to be talking about ethnicity. You could just be talking about, oh God, look at this sofa. What's all that about? You still have to have that sort of outsider position. And obviously, being an, an Egyptian person, an Egyptian bred person <laughs> in Wales. With a in, lovely Welsh yeah. accent I hasten oh, to add. thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Although I was in a taxi, in Car I was just been in Cardiff, I had a day off yesterday in Cardiff and um, and I, there was a proper Welsh guy taxi driver, like a proper valleys lad, a proper <laughs> Welsh guy. But like a brick and, house in other words. Yeah, like a proper <laughs> Welsh guy, you know, like proper, like he eats rugby balls, you know, that kind oh, of right, thing. Okay, yeah? that kind of guy. And he said, and he said oh, where, where do you live then? And I said, um, and I said, I live in, I live in London, but I'm, I'm from Cardiff. He goes, you're not from Cardiff. <laughs> You sound like a cockney. <laughs> <laughs> just, just thought in this man's brain, you know, I'm the just there going, you are a yeah. <laughs> So it's all relative. Maybe it's time for me to move back to Wales and just Welsh up a little bit. But I mean, you know? I mean, I used to live in Wales, and I have to confess that people found me a little bit confusing because of, because of the area where I worked. Everybody yes. assumed that, that I came from Africa. They didn't quite understand that I lived in North London and that my parents were from the West Indies. Yeah. But I mean, when, when you actually said to people, actually, I, I live in Wales, but yeah. my parents are from Egypt. I mean, yeah. did that really throw yeah. people but at you, all? You, you were in West Wales, weren't you? Which, which, is, which is a little bit different. I mean, I, I mean <laughs> okay, West what you say about Wales. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, West Wales is a little bit different. I was in Cardiff. The interesting thing about Cardiff is that it has, it has one of the longest histories of multiculturalism in Britain, one of, one of the first mosques well, in Tiger Britain. Tiger Bay. Yeah, exactly. One of the first mosques in Britain was in Cardiff. A lot of people don't know that. So it's got a long history of multiculturalism but the volume of multiculturalism <laughs> isn't as high certainly in the area where I grew up it wasn't as high as it is say in London so I think a lot of people it's it, and uh, it has sort of given me that sort of natural mm. sort of outsider's perspective is that I'm used to sort of being sat in the corner just sort of watching things going oh I think that's a bit funny you know so if you, if you had to describe your comedy is it observational is it a combination of observational and, and something else? If so, what is that something yeah. else? It's difficult to describe because I've, I've, I mean, there are a lot of comics who I work with who can sort of sit down and say, right, I want to do a show about the, the history of carpets, right, let's do some jokes about that. And I, I just can't do that. I've tried doing that. I've because tried... you, you're not a scripting merchant. No, not at all. I can't script my stuff at all. I mean, I've just got a lot of energy and I just sort of throw it around. I just sort of write down what happens to me. So yesterday I was in an Egyptian wedding in, in the Welsh valleys with my mum. Um, and I was literally just there, just sort of getting my phone out, going, oh, that's quite funny, that's quite funny. My mum was trying to arrange me a bride at the wedding as well. And, and so, so you really upset her? Yeah. <laughs> you frustrated yeah. her plans? The interesting thing is trying to explain to all the Egyptian uncles what a comedian is. You just see all the mums taking you off the husband shortlist actually, for their I was daughters. going to ask you about that, actually, because, I mean, you find that in some communities, if you, if, parents like it if you do something respectable, yeah. you know, if you're a doctor, if you're an engineer or a journalist. But if you decide to be a musician or a comedian, that's like a serious no-no. You've really let the team down. Do you yeah. get that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not. I mean, my, my, my mother's been very supportive and everything, and she loves what I do. She comes to my shows and everything. But um, but I think a lot of the time when you, when I'm, it's just so awkward in in a proper sort of Egyptian community event, and everyone's going, oh, so what are you doing? And everyone else is a doctor. Every, it's such a cliche. It's such a cliche. Everyone else is a doctor. Usually, when people say, what do you do? It means what specialism within medicine have you gone for? So what's your comedy specialism, well, multiculturalism. Yeah, I think, well, I just talk about what happens to me. So my mum was literally trying to set me up with a bride yesterday, so it's just all the stuff going through my head, and she's, she comes from quite a religious family. Like, what if I actually like her? I'll have to go on, like, an Islamic first date or something. I've never been on an Islamic first date. I don't know what you talk about. I'm quite religious, but what are you going to talk about? Like, who's your favourite 
prophet. I don't know. But I mean, you the, mentioned there Islam. Is, is it safe to joke about Islam? And, and, and can you joke about politics? I mean, for example, what's happened in the European elections? So the, so the yes. two things, Islam and, and Europe, because yeah. I mean, they're intertwined in many ways. Yeah, absolutely. It's ne well, I, I, I never take the mick out of religion. I think there are, there are enough comedians uh, sort of being quite left-wing, quite anti-religion. And I'm sort of quite different to a lot of comedians in that I'm, I'm a little bit right-wing. By comedian standards, I'm, 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 I'm UKIP, you know, because I'm, <laughs> I'm just a little bit right-wing. People joke about UKIP and stuff. I mean, a lot of people have been calling them racist. I don't think they're particularly racist. I think it is just, it is just that a lot of people in the electorate across Europe wanted to send a message to the elite. Whenever you have an elite of politicians who are a little bit too comfortable, a little bit too relaxed, people want to go to someone a little bit different in Britain right. and France, so, that was the right, but in Greece, it was it was left wing. Right, parties. but so there's, there's there's certainly something there in, in that election that, that gives you great material to actually laugh at. Yeah, absolutely, and there is something funny about UKIP supporters. <laughs> a lot of people I know who voted UKIP were great people, but there is there is a certain type of UKIP for a uh, UKIP uh, uh, voter who is just sort of there. Like, oh, I remember the glory days of Britain when everyone wore a flat cap and everyone drove a tractor and everyone was white. It was wonderful. Yeah, and I think there is some truth. To that. <laughs> But There's I think they're in the back minority. to memory lane. Yeah. But I mean, it's just in the time available, I mean, okay, you, 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 you do stand up, you're on your own. Do you ever think you could ever have a comedy partner? So you find somebody, so mm. you'll be like the sort of 21st century version of Morecambe and Wise or yeah. Flanagan and Allen, whatever. I mean, yeah. that really goes back, doesn't I'm it? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely um, open to it. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I love stand up and I'm focused on stand up. Um, there's lots of other stuff potentially going on, like little bits of acting and little bits of radio and little bits of writing. But I mean, the core of what I do is me standing on my own with a microphone making people laugh. So I think that's what I'm going to focus on. OK, well, you yeah. say little bits of acting and little bits of writing. So yeah. is that where you see yourself going in, in, the, in the future, the yeah. far, far future? Yeah, well, the far, far future, I, I really don't know. I've, I've, I stumbled into stand-up anyway. It was, I never sat down. I never grew up watching stand-up. I never grew up saying, this is what I want. I just sort of stumbled into this as a, <laughs> as a dare. So we'll see what happens. Well, the dare's <laughs> paid off. Omar Hamdi, absolute <laughs> pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you,